Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. As always, we've got another good viewer request. Somebody out there wanted to see uh, a little bit about vices. And I got into a discussion with myself, what separates a clamp from a vice? So I looked them up in the dictionary. A clamp is a brace, band, or clasp used for strengthening or holding things together. And a vice is an immoral or wicked behavior. So, pretty different, I reckon. But all jokes aside, a vice, according to the dictionary here, is a metal tool with movable jaws that, are, that is used to hold an object firmly in place while work is being done on it, a tip, typically attached to a workbench. For once, the dictionary is completely wrong on both of those fronts, in my opinion. A, a clamp can be anything. You can have somebody standing on a piece of paper, and essentially that is a clamp. You can have a screw driven into a wall, and that is typically a clamp. Where do they separate, more or less? This is a clamp. This here is a vice clamp, more or less, is what it's called. Or they go by many names, but this right here is a vice. So what separates these two tools? Because they essentially do the same thing. In my opinion, a clamp goes to the work. This is portable, you can, you can take it wherever you want to. A vice, on the other hand, you have to take the work to it because it's usually stationary, it doesn't move. So, in my opinion, that is what separates a clamp from a vice. So, we're gonna take a look at a couple of different neat style vices that I have uh, around here. I'll show you some of the most popular ones out there and then I'll show you some of the more uncommon ones that you don't see very often. And we might get into some advanced work holding and some things you don't see every day that might strike you with some good ideas. I know some people have seen this kind of stuff, but some people haven't. So we're going to check it out and see how it goes. All right, the first vice that we're going to look at here is a bench vice. Uh, some people still call them by their uh, original name, which is a machinist vice. I have no idea why they call them that uh, because there's plenty of other vices I would consider more of a machinist vice, but not the point. Anyways, this right here is a cast iron bench vise. It's pretty heavily made, not, not nothing special. It's a, I think this is a Chinese vise. But uh, as you can tell, they rate vices by the width of the jaw and how deep they can open, on a bench vise at least. Now this one is actually pretty unique. You can actually twist the, uh, the vise itself. You can make these jaws lean over in both directions, I think. And of course, the uh, base on them swivels, so you can so you can move them left and right, back and forth, that kind of stuff. A machinist vise or a bench vise really has square jaws on it, meaning that when you open this vise up, now this one's been damaged, so I have to kind of work it pretty hard. Meaning that the jaws are parallel with each other. This end is the same distance from this end to this jaw. So everything's nice and square. The pros of a vice like this is they're very, very affordable. You can find them just about anywhere. These are very popular. And they're, you can get cheap ones, you can get good ones. It's just the sky's the limit, pretty much. This one right here has a uh, pipe vice on it as well. It's missing the other part of it. But you can stick a pipe up in here and it'll clamp it. The only problem with this style is these teeth they bite into the pipe and they'll skin your pipe all up so they're not the best in the world but bench vices are good they're like I said I use a vice almost every day just about so stuff like this is very very good to have so let's take a look a look at one that's a little bit better okay we're on the back of my truck right here this right here is a Rock Island vice which is American made it is older than sin itself I believe it is it's a tough old son of a gun and once again you can see that the jaws are about the same width as the, uh, the one I showed on my bench this one right here is very very old though it's it's been around like I said a long time but um, one characteristic of both of these vices are they're both cast meaning that they're cast iron they're not very suitable for beating on even though we beat on vices that's just part of it, it they they will break and they, a lot of times they'll either break 
right here where the solid head is or they'll break somewhere internally that's that's a very big problem when you're looking for a vise to buy one critical thing that you need to check is how much slack is in the worm so if you'll count it it took one and a quarter revolutions before it started to engage again so that is usually a sign that either it's super war from being old or it's been abused one of the two but also check the smoothness this vice here is very smooth and but like I said you count them one and a quarter before it starts to move back so if you don't mind fooling with the handle it's still a good vice but that's one thing that you need to consider if you're going to buy a used vice so let's take a look at a couple of other ones we're on the back of my dad's service truck out here and he has got a true legitimate vice here this is a Wilton bullet vice as a bench vice as it goes by this right here the other ones I showed you were cast iron this one here is actually made out of steel so very very expensive vice but very good vice very very tough so once again you can check it's got about half He's used this vice for years, so that ain't bad. So let's count it. Yeah, that was about a full turn that time. But that's not bad. Still a good smooth action on it. Tough old vice. But it's however much money that you want to spend to have something good that's going to last you a long time. I know he's put this vice on three other service trucks, including mine. So it wore out trucks before he wore the vice out. So that's pretty amazing. Okay, we're getting into some of the unusual ones here. Now this right here, as most people have seen, is known as a leg vise. Some people might call them a blacksmith vise, but its proper name is a leg vise or a post vise. So, what's so special about this vise? Well, for one thing, it's made out of either steel or wrought iron. Most of them are made out of wrought iron. And that means that these things were super, super abusive takers like you could sit there and just beat and beat and beat on them and and they'll bend they won't break like cast iron will as you can tell somebody's done goofy jaws all up you can tell that they're not straight anymore and there, there's a lot of work that can be done on this vice but uh I, personally i love it it is very very uh, for being all tore up it still works really well but uh this one right here the engagement you can tell is actually still pretty tight there's almost no slack in that other than these little holes on it. But uh, the cool thing about a leg vise is, other than that you can beat on them, is they don't, well, one issue with them is they don't clamp straight. As I showed you before, the, the uh, jaws here were parallel on the bench vices. These, they're not because they hinge down here at the bottom. So the wider that I open this, as you'll see, The wider I open it, you can tell that they're opening like a like your hand does more or less. And those those jaws are not parallel with each other. So if you need to grab something that's square, that's usually a problem that you'll have. But other than that, they're pretty cool. The biggest problem with these vices are they still make new ones, but they're nothing like the old ones. They're getting harder and harder to find. I found this one in a... Um, well, I bought it off a guy that he had it thrown over in his yard, I think. I'd love to get a bigger one of these, maybe a 110, 130-pound one. This one right here might be 75. It might be 60. But uh, post vices are great. They are super, super secure. Like the name suggests, if you put them on a post, they will stay there. They're very, very tough. But that's a pretty, pretty neat aspect there. Okay, now we're starting to get into some high-end vices here. This right here is a horizontal vise. This is a true machinist vise. It is very, very, very precise. On the bench vices and the post vise that I showed you, these jaws here, they're somewhat parallel, but they've, they've got tolerances in them. They're probably plus or minus a 30 second, something like that. You know, that's, that's good enough for most work just holding stuff, but when you need to hold something secure and it needs to be square and true, 
That's where these come in. This right here is a Kurt American made vise here and it is super awesome. Like I showed earlier, very, very smooth, almost no slack in the worm. But the cool thing about this vise is how precise the jaws are on here. Now you can take the jaws off of off of this vise. Some vices you can, some of them you can't. The uh, little Chinese vise I showed you earlier, you can take the jaws off of it. Uh, Rock Island, you can. The post vise, you can. But this one, you can. So the cool thing about this one is these jaws are probably parallel to their cells within probably one, maybe not, not more than 1,000, maybe 2,000, but it's very, very tight. The squareness of the jaws also is also within, I think, five tenths. So amazingly straight. I mean, it is unbelievable. So that being said, as long as you've got a part that's halfway straight itself, this vise will hold it at any angle just about, which is amazing. Most vices can't do this. So if you put something in there, and say it's way over on the edge, it don't even have to be on this side as well. Most vices are real bad about racking, and I'll show you what that is here in a little bit. But what that means is when you put pressure on one side, it pushes this side inward a little bit, and they'll rack, and you don't get a very good clamping force on your part. But this vise right here being so precisely made, stuff don't rack. This this vise will not rack. It'll hold that part extremely well. You can see I'm hitting pretty hard on it and it's not moving. So not all vices can do that. So, and it can clamp something very, very small. So it doesn't matter what it is. Very well made vise. Y'all probably saw the other one I have over here. This is also a horizontal vise. This is for a drill press. Most of them are. And you can see, this is what I was talking about racking. The, uh, the little cleat right here, the bottom half of the vise, you see how much it racks? That's probably racking probably three-eighths of an inch. That's, that's loads. That's a lot. But it's good for clamping irregular shaped parts, and that's what it's good for in the drill press. But, uh, yes, very, very impressive vise. All right, here we have another vise. This right here is known as a chuck main difference between a chuck and a, and a vise is, I really don't know, it's just another name for a vise, I believe. But anyways, this is a very, very neat vise. It uses magnets to hold work down instead of a mechanical advantage, more or less. So, or mechanical means, I should say. So anyways, as long as you've got something that's got a little bit of iron in it, it could even be stainless. 400 series stainless has enough iron in it to make it magnetic. So, as you can see, I can move that freely. You take this handle and you flip it up, and now it's there. And you can turn the magnet back off, pick it up just as easy. Nothing to it. But that is very, very impressive. But what's good about the magnetic vise is, is you can do some stuff that's super thin, like this parallel right here. You can lay it down, Turn it on, and you can't move that. So, very, very good for doing very precise little finicky work. Now, I know what you're saying. What if you got a piece of 3 16 stainless or something that you want to grind or, or hold, more or less? Well, you can build a fixture out of a piece of steel, and you can make it to hold that part, and you can put it on here, and it'll work just the same. Sky's the limit. Use your imagination when it comes to, to, to finding ways to, to hold your work. So that's another unusual vice. You usually won't see something like that every day. Unless you work in a machine shop, of course. Okay, branch away from vices a little bit. It's just work holding in general. So one of the coolest ones out there, and, and most machinists know, but not a lot of other people I don't assume is actually collets. This right here is a collet. It's nothing but like a just a piece of round steel more or less with a lot of slots cut in it and you can put force on there and it'll clamp and it is amazing how strong 
these are. They're very, very precise and very, very strong. So here's one right here. This is a three-quarter collet. You can put tooling in there. There's a two-flute, three-quarter end mill. It just fits right in there. You'll have a retaining sleeve of some kind. And you can place it up into the chuck here and tighten it up. And when that thing's tight, it'll grab that tool and very, very secure. Now, a lot of uh, vertical mills, I know a lot of them use R8 collets. All of the lays use 5C collets. This right here is a uh, Enco. I'm not sure exactly what style of collet holder this is, but very in interchangeable. And uh, when they're in there, they're in there pretty good. A lot of times you have to bump them out. And see, I didn't do nothing but just hand tighten that. So let me get this out of here. But uh, they don't hold just tools. You know, that's an end mill here. They also can hold stock. This right here is a boring bar that I made. And it's got a one inch end on it. So you can take collet, same deal. You can use a retaining sleeve. Or you can actually turn with the actual machine too. So pretty neat how all that works. All right, here's another type of vise. This here, this is actually a pipe fitting tool. It's made to put two pieces of pipe, butt them up together, and then you can do a full penetration weld on there. But this is essentially a chain vise. These are very popular in the pipe industry because they can hold so well. So to give you a demonstration, this is not how this tool is used, but you can use it for this. Is all you do is you wrap the chain around here. And you've got a little hand lug on one side that you tighten up. But anyways, chains do a real good job of, of securing. That's in there really, really well. But you would use this in real life. You would have a joint right here, right here in the middle. And you would butt these two pieces up and this would make it, or try to make it as, as parallel as it could so that you, you wouldn't have minor issue, issue trying to fit your pipe. Now this right here is a very antique way to hold something. But uh, it's recently come back in the last couple of years. Uh, I guess a lot of woodworkers got into this. But it's actually using wedges for vices. So how it would work is you'd have a piece of material, slip it into two places, like so, take a hammer, tap it, and, well, this is the wrong size wedge for this. But uh, they work actually surprisingly well. This one here, I ain't got all my, my gaps and everything set right. But when this is used correctly in the right situation, uh, wedges actually do a very, very good job of holding work. I'll show a little better demonstration of that. Here are a couple of different types of work holding. These right here are using the pipeline. These here are known as pipe dogs. Uh, they go by different names as well. But it's nothing but half a C-clamp somebody's cut in half. And you can weld on this side and you can use the screw on this end to push and pull pipes to get the high low out of them. So uh, they're real popular on pipe that's bigger than 24 inches because you, you're not going to be able to move it any other way. So that's one of them. I'll show a demonstration of that one. Here's another classic example of a lot of iron workers use these. Uh, I don't think they really use these on the pipeline much anymore, but this right here is just an L bracket, more or less. You take this and you weld this leg to your piece that you're going to use as your anchor, more or less. And the trick I showed you with the wedge, you'll drive one or two or however many wedges you need under here to get another piece, either to hold it to, or to move it. So I'll show a demonstration of that as well.
Okay, so the point of just tagging it on one side is you can take a hammer and just break it off from this side. Um, now some places won't allow you to do that because it rips the base metal out. But uh, so you'll have to go in there with a grinder and cut it. That's basically how you would use it. You would take something that you wanted to move or to hold. You can use these to hold too. Doesn't matter how many you use. Put one down, say I don't have enough. Take another one and stack it on top of it. Now, still ain't got my angles right. I will maybe break it a little bit. But you can see, that ain't bad. It's real, real good in the lateral direction, the side to side, not so much. But that is super handy if you need to move something where you just, you're not able to get a clamp. You know, we're on the edge of the table here, but I could have put it in the middle. It wouldn't matter. So wedges, good way to go. And then when you get done with that, you can break it off. That is. Solid as a rock. Mm. A little rust never hurt nothing. This was a pretty good clamp at one time. There you go. Now then, do I suggest going out and cutting up a bunch of C clamps? No. But the cool thing about this is you can recycle some of your old clamps that you might have broken. You know, you may have some in a scrap bin. You know, as long as they ain't broken up here, a lot of them do break a right around in here. So that would be one thing that you could do with them. And once again, just like a regular C clamp, they're fairly secure. They usually do better in pairs. So just like the wedge deal, you can put this anywhere. If you want to put it in the middle of the table and have a clamp in the middle, very, very handy. And if you tack it on one side, once again, you can got some good tacks on it. Of course, there are also, instead of just uh, metal vices, there are also wooden vices here. This is just a standard 14 inch, more or less, bench vise. That's exactly what it is. Uh, they're made a little bit different than their metal counterparts. As, as you can tell, we've got guide pins in here that help this to keep it from racking. Now, I talked about that earlier. Most metal vices, don't usually have a huge problem with racking. They do some. They don't hold work very good out there on the on the ends, except for the machinist vise, of course, the uh, precision machinist. But these right here rack terribly. Uh, wooden vices are just like that. So to give you an example, if I put this block, say, well, we'll put it on the edge here. Okay, I got it on the edge right here. Now, 
as you can already tell that it's starting to rack so if I t keep tightening on it you can definitely see that that vise is skewed over quite a bit and this is not secure I did a whole video on this uh, a couple of years ago talking about that and the counter to that is to put something equally thickness equal thickness on the other side so once again we can put this this piece back in here we've got the piece back in there but we've also added a piece that's the same thickness as the piece that we're using and then once again you can tighten it up this eliminates your racking and now that is very 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 secure so the way that I showed how to do it is to use bridge blocks which is nothing but just different thicknesses that you just drive a nail through so you don't have to hold it you can just set it right there on the vise and the table and it'll hold itself so very very handy tools to have okay this right here has been an age-old problem for a very long time a lot of these disc gangs have square nuts on them like this one now maybe in other places but not around here that, that you can find a square an eight point or a four point socket that'll fit this so you can do it with an impact so you ain't got to worry about leverage you can just more or less tap it on there so how do you tighten something like this you know we got to put a good bit of good bit of strain on it so it'll tighten back up but every time you go to turn it it's going to either want to shift or roll on you so we got to figure out a way to clamp it to hold the work steady and one of the coolest tools out there and this is a very unappreciated tool is the chain come along uh, these things are a godsend. Uh, there's a, a lot of people will tell you out there, especially shutdown workers, pipe industry, all this kind of stuff, they couldn't do their job without these. These things are, are incredible. They can do a lot of different types of work. So we're going to use this to hold this thing down. So. Okay, let me show you what I've done here. So we got a chain over here with a hook that's holding this side, and then we've just placed just the regular old end on there. And this right here is like 16 inch channel iron, as you can see. So we got a nice good lip so we can hold from that end, from both ends. And the next thing you'll do is you'll take yourself a piece of steel, or two pieces depending, place it right up under the teeth and it can't roll over that so you'll put one on the other side or preferably just one side if you only got one piece of stock but now you can tighten that gang up and that will not move so let's give it a test all right we're gonna tighten it up and see if it'll move Loosen it up a little bit to let the, the blade slide forward. Now that shit don't look half bad. Do we dare to put a cheater on it? I think we should. I 
feel pretty good with that. Might go one more. I know there's going to be some people out there that's going to ask about clamps and why I didn't talk about them. You know, whether it's F-style woodworking clamps or hand screws or even vice grips. You know, it's got vice in the name. These tools are very relatively easy to use. They're, you know, you, you tighten them up, you adjust them, whatever you got to do to make them work. You know, there's, there's not a whole lot of big science in them or... And most people have seen tools like these. Now, granted, a lot of the devices that I showed, that I've shown you, I'm sure most people know what those are. You know, maybe not so much the precision horizontal vise, or maybe even the mag chuck or the mag vise, uh, using wedges and stuff like that to manipulate work, and using chain come-alongs and stuff like that. That's that's kind of unusual stuff. Not everybody's gonna you know know that. So. Uh, I hope it gives you some insight and uh, hopefully it gives you some ideas to, uh, to find ways of working around other things, more or less. That's, that's what my channel is all about, is to help people out. So, hope you got something out of it, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, like, subscribe to me if you like, leave a comment if you don't mind. And uh, guys, I will see you all next time. As always, you all take care and God bless.